Hey YouTube, hey, thanks for checking back into the channel uh, for this upload of uh, Life with a C8. <laughs> so what I've got on the wall here, uh, real quick while we got that in view, uh, is the black engine cover obviously there that I took off, replaced it with a red one. So I thought, hey, I'll put that on the wall, you know, make a little art thing, thingy. <laughs> so then I bought some um, uh, patent drawings of Ferris Corvettes over the years, kind of put those up there around that. Oh, that was kind of cool to park the car in here in front of that. So that's what we, that's what we do, back the car in, and there you go, got a little, little art there in the, in the man cave. Okay, so let's go take a look at this dude. So there it is, the C8 back in action uh it was uh we'll just look at this here while, while i tell you a little story about it real quick uh it was at the shop for about a month a little bit over a month actually uh transmission went out and they don't know exactly what happened they just were told hey we're just going to replace it and i think they're going to diagnose it when they get it back but they think maybe some parts parts uh particles broke loose and traveled to a solenoid somewhere and, and did some some issues some damage there uh, and then in the process of taking all that out they found an engine coolant leak uh, so they noticed that the uh, there was some kind of a press fitting on the water pump that was bad and from the manufacturer uh, so they had to get one of those and parts all that took about a month to get all the parts and all that with the COVID stuff going on so they did a great job on that. Uh, so far, it's it's been flawless since I've had it, but we're gonna take it in here this next week and let them recheck and make sure everything's good to go. Uh, so yeah, they put it all together and it's all good. So this is my uh, C8. I got it in uh, mid to late March, March 20th. I think it arrived at the dealership on uh, March the uh, 16th, somewhere in there. So I've had it a while. Hadn't put many miles on it. It had 90 miles on it or so when the uh, check engine light came on for that issue. So, yeah, pretty bad. So this is a, uh, it's the Z51 package, 2LT, uh, C8. And um, I put the GT2 seats in there. And just for style and kind of, you know, the, I think the fit of them is, is the same as the GT1. They just look better, you know, carbon fiber, on the uh, headrest, a little bit headrest design is different and uh, kind of a piano black uh, back to it, shiny, it's kind of kind of neat. So it's mostly just for looks, really. Uh, I did red, red seat belts and then I did the uh, five spoke carbon flash wheels with the bright red calipers, those are bright red. I was kind of in a quandary over bright red versus that uh, edge red because the engine cover is edge red, basically. These are not quite in the same range but anyway i thought they just have more pop right i think edge red would also match the chevy emblem there on the uh or the corvette emblem on the uh on the wheel center cap uh so uh what else did i get i got mag ride z51 i got uh front end lift mm -hmm. on there and let's see i think that's about it oh i did the engine appearance package all right that comes with uh those lights up there on that black uh, piece up there kind of on the the rear hatch and uh, then you get these two big carbon fiber pieces to kind of cover up some of the tubular structures in there right uh, that's it and the uh, the lights come on back here when obviously you open the hatch up or when you uh, hit the unlock button it comes on and uh, that's it. So that's the red engine cover. It's kind of nice. Got a little bit of a metallic-y look to it. Um, anyway, so trunk's good size. You've seen all that. Of course, I did the high wing spoiler. You can see that. I think it makes it look pretty aggressive, right? Maybe a little much. I don't know. Looks pretty good. Rear diffuser is cool. It's got a pretty good profile to it, actually. When you're when you're down there, kind of along the plane of it, there. Kind of neat. Uh, so let's look inside real quick. Here we go. So I didn't do the carbon fiber inside. I just left the the uh, the stainless here because I knew that this would be stainless. So it's like, eh, whatever, right? You're just going to add carbon fiber there. It wasn't worth 
over a thousand dollars for goodness sakes for that and then around the uh, the gauge cluster and the uh, shifting mechanism over there uh, when I took it to the dealership I found some some kind of uh, uh, oh kind of a vinyl material and I just laid it on there and kind of had to tape it in a few spots but that kind of keeps them from dinging up your entryway when they get in and with their big boots and stuff <laughs> also did the illuminated door seals we can't see those right now that was an aftermarket thing at the dealership and they did a did a good job putting those on so gt2 seats extremely comfortable i love the red seat belts what's cool is when you can see the red seat belt and then you can see back in the back the red engine cover at the same time right isn't that cool i love that love it uh, i love the uh i don't mind the uh, all those buttons and stuff for the hvac system right there i think it's fine it's obviously driver centric car that's the way it should be it's what it is you know um uh, it's awesome um i would say be honest with you i think i'm digging the interior better than the exterior if that if that makes sense um the interior is very nice i was really 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 impressed with it the the texture rubberized texture whatever this is of the 2LT dash is amazing. Just, and the doors, amazing, very solid. Um, so yeah, so extremely impressed with the interior of the 2LT. Uh, it's all you need, unless you want fancy uh, micro suede or uh, Alcantara interior, if, unless you just are just gotta have it and gotta have leather on the steering wheel, which mine doesn't have it, uh, in the center area of the steering wheel, if you don't, you know, if you don't have to have that, I mean, good Lord, just stay with the 2LT. You get everything else that comes with it. Home link and all that business. Uh, fancy stereo, which is really nice, by the way. Um, so anyway, you got everything you get on the 3LT. Just you don't have fancy Alcantara. You don't have maybe leather on the doors, on the dash, leather on the steering wheel. But really, you need that in a car you can take on a racetrack? Anyway. Anywho, to each his own. That's why they make it, right? And they even come with uh, nice pedals already from the factory. Pretty cool. Uh, one thing I've noticed, number one, I cannot stand the camera on the rearview mirror as your eyes are focused in a different spot. You put, look at that, it's, whoa, it's, uh, it's just your brain can't handle it. Mine can't. I don't like it. Uh, I've driven cars with poor visibility in the rear, and I just continue to have poor visibility in the rear, so no big deal. Uh, and the... Uh, Oh, <laughs> sun visors, when you flip them forward, they really don't flip very far forward, as you can see. See that right there? That's as far forward as it goes. Look how close it is to the steering wheel. So when you're driving and you gotta have it, you, uh, your vision's obscured. So, not very good. There's a big buttress or something in front of it that kind of keeps it from going forward. So I've noticed that's, that's not good at all. Uh, anyway, but the interior is nice. Mine's uh, everything's pretty straight, all the seams and stitching and all that stuff, so no big deal. But I'm just telling you, the inside is, to me, the biggest improvement in the car, uh, other than overall design, obviously. I mean, it's a cool-looking car, right? Uh, it's a wicked-looking car, actually. I mean, it's just phenomenal. And I can tell you this, on video here, it doesn't look anything like it in person. I mean, it's just, you can see all the the angles and the uh, the dimensions so much better uh, by uh, by being a person. So anyway, pretty amazing car. GM did a really good job on it. Uh, I know they flogged them pretty well. I've had some issues with mine, but hopefully that's just a uh, apologize about the doofus out there. Uh, but I'm sure it's just kind of maybe hopefully more fluke than anything. So. The, uh, I asked the dealership how much it would have cost for me to like, write a check for the, the cost of re repair. And they said, well, between labor and the parts, it would have been about $20,000 <laughs> for, for 30 some odd hours of labor. And then the parts were about $16,000, probably, you know, somewhere in that range. So pretty crazy. And to do a lot of the work on the vet, they've got to drop the engine out. So you're going to see that. Uh, it's going to be a, a constant recurrence uh, in repairs 
because they just can't take it at the top. There's no way you can't get to anything. Uh, there's too much stuff occluding it, so it's all got to come out. Which, which they've been doing that for years anyway. So no, nothing big, big there. They've they're used to it. So anyway, uh, mine was the first car to again have the coolant replaced and refilled. Extremely long, multi-hour process. And uh, yeah, so they did a great job. So there's the car, C8 2020, C8 uh, mid-engine Corvette there. Uh, no, I didn't repeat it like some people do all the time, right? <laughs> um, and you'd be amazed at how, how well it drives. It's uh, very refined, I'd say. It drives extremely smooth, pretty darn quiet inside. I'm still in the break-in period, so I haven't been able to to goose it or anything to see what it really sounds like. But uh, driving like a granny, it sounds uh, pretty pretty docile at the moment. So. Anyway, thanks for checking in, and uh, we'll do some more updates for you. See you later. Have a good day.